welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending June 13th, 2020. We start this week off, um, as usual, with a couple of exciting new anime announcements. First up, the official website for Hiroyuki Takei's Shaman King manga revealed this week that a new anime adaptation is in the works. This makes me so happy. The television anime plans to adapt all 35 volumes of the manga's new complete edition, which will begin print publication later this month. The website also announced that the first 2001 anime adaptation will begin streaming in Japan on the full anime TV and Bon Bon TV services. The original Shaman King manga debuted in Weekly Shonen Jump magazine back in 1998. The series then abruptly ended in 2004, but a reprinting of the manga in 2009 added a new true ending. Takei then launched a new arc for the Shaman King manga in 2018, titled Shaman King the Superstar, which is still ongoing. The new anime is set to premiere next April, as in a year from now. Um, so fans or Student B fans, go check out the cool preview video for the new series and start catching up on the manga. You have 35 volumes to go. Uh, meanwhile, mangaka Hiro Mashima, creator of a little manga series you might have heard of called Fairy Tale, announced this week that his Eden's Zero manga is getting a television anime adaptation. No further details have been released yet, but he asked fans to, quote, stay tuned for incoming updates, end quote, so that's what we'll have to do. And in case you couldn't tell, it's, based, it's from the Fairy Tale guy, it's from the Fairy Tale guy. The manga launched in Weekly Shonen Magazine in June 2018, and uh, Kodansha Comics publishes the series in English and describes the story as follows. At Grand Bell Kingdom, an abandoned amusement park, Shiki has lived his entire life among machines, but one day Rebecca and her cat companion Happy appear at the park's front gates. Little do these newcomers know that this is the first human contact Grand Bell has had in a hundred years years. As Shiki stumbles his way into making new friends, his former neighbors stir at an opportunity for a robo-rebellion, and when his old homeland becomes too dangerous, Shiki must join Rebecca and Happy on their spaceship and escape into the boundless cosmos, because it's shonen. Why not? The manga's eighth English volume shipped just this Tuesday, and the tenth Japanese volume will be published later this month. So um, be interesting to see quite how they adapt that and the pacing of it. We'll see. For anyone looking for something short and cute to watch right now, Toy has you covered. Toy's Japanese Tokusatsu YouTube official channel began streaming a short anime this week based on the ongoing Tokusatsu series Machine Sentai Kira Major. Excuse me, Kira Major, the forty-fourth entry in the classic Super Sentai series. The new original short anime is a spin-off of the series set in a world inspired by Japanese folklore, thus the little you know, samurai guy, titled Mashin Old Tale Theater. The short anime is described as, uh, by its website as full of playfulness, enjoyed by the whole family, including children. It features classic Japanese folk tales reenacted by chippy versions of the Mashin, which are the battle vehicles used by the Kiramajers in the original series. Maybe the concept will catch on, and we'll get Chibi Gundam Theater next? We can hope. The first episode is now streaming for free on Toy's Tokusatsu YouTube channel. It is region locked, but if you have a good way to watch Japanese YouTube content and feel like watching cute mini mechs act out Japanese folktales, check it out. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Uh, last new series announcement this week isn't an anime, but it's still pretty notable. It was announced this week that Amazon is developing an English language live action adaptation of the Promised Neverland manga. That one right there. The series is set to be produced by Amazon Studios and Fox 21 Television Studios. Two of the main creators behind Spider Man Into the Spider Verse will be working on the series, with Megan Malloy writing the pilot script and Rodney Rothman directing and co-producing the series. Rothman commented on Twitter about the announcement, saying, quote, excited to be adapting the scary, soulful, hopeful, promised Neverland 
I met the two creators in December in Tokyo and fell in love with the spirit behind their project, end quote. Hmm. The series will also be co-produced by Masi Oka, who also worked on Netflix's live action Death Note. Oh. And the theoretically upcoming Hollywood Attack on Titan film. Oh. Considering the track record so far of Western live action anime adaptations, we should probably wait and see before getting hopes up too high. A Japanese live action film adaptation of the series is also currently in the works and is set to debut in December. Maybe the English series producers can take some cues from the film if that turns out well. Hmm. The original Promise Neverland manga launched in Shonen Jump magazine in August of 2016 and had entered the climax of its final arc last summer. The anime adaptation premiered in January 2019 and has a second season forthcoming, uh, though it was delayed until 2021 because, you know. <clears throat> now, online event announcements have become a staple news item lately. Um, are all the original OnCon attendees feeling like trendsetters yet? But uh, another summer mainstay event is now making the switch to online. Otakon announced... Otakon announced... Otakon announced... Mm. Otakon announced today that they'll be hosting a one-day online event streaming event. Uh, on, sorry, one-day online streaming event on Saturday, August 1st. The event's described as a full day of interviews, panels, builder workshops, music, and gaming events that'll be split across several different channels depending on content type. There will also be special appearances from some of the guests that were set to attend the in-person con. Uh, details on which ones have yet to be announced, so if any of your favorites were set to attend Otakon, keep your eyes peeled for updates. Good news that not all of that stuff is being completely canceled. The event has also reopened program submissions for the online event, noting that they want to maintain Otakon's precedent of being for fans and by fans, even in the online format. They also plan to offer many other ways for the community to contribute, with uh, photos, short videos, memes, and challenges. Oh, memes. Great. The promo video for Otakon Online explains that they wanted to do something to help raise everyone's spirits among all of the cancellations and isolation. And as we've experienced firsthand here, online community events are certainly a good way to do that. Otakon's social media and the Otakon Online webpage will continue to be updated with new information, obviously. So watch for the updates and look forward to uh, more con content coming up, hopefully, if all that works out. Uh, meanwhile, Bandai Namco Arts and Anime Studio 8-Bit announced this week that they have entered into a business partnership with the goal of focusing on producing animation-based video works and related content. Bandai Namco plans to make use of 8-Bit's animation production resources to produce, quote, high-quality hit content, end quote, which really should be the goal of any content creator. And 8-Bit plans to take advantage of Bandai Namco Art's production, planning, and networking abilities, like anyone would want to. The partnership's first project will be the upcoming The Slime Diaries, that time I got reincarnated as a slime anime series, based on the spin-off manga of the same name. The, that anime is set to premiere in April of 2021, so we'll have to wait a little while to see that. Um, they say it's going to be the... You know, uh, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so let's wait a little... Wait a little, 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 little. Anyway, more anime is always a good thing, so here's to lots of success for the new partnership. Uh, let's see here, what else? Um, now, has anyone been feeling like they just don't have enough places to watch anime lately? In the rare chance that that's the case, or if you're just wanting a 24-7 stream of anime to broadcast into your brain at all times, Cinedime has got you covered. This week, they launched the ConTV Anime Network, a linear streaming and advertising video on demand service broadcasting Japanese animated films and series. Cinedime describes the new network as featuring, quote, 24-7 programming of anime content for curious newcomers and ardent anime enthusiasts alike, focusing on a diverse range of anime genres spanning from cyberpunk, 
and the supernatural to tense dramas, epic fantasy sagas, and everything in between, end quote. In other words, everything. They plan to offer viewers a wide selection of both popular series and hard-to-find favorites, quote, presented in English or with dubbing, end quote, which seems redundant, but I think we'll know what they're, they were getting uh, at there. In any case, if you're looking for a favorite that hasn't been available on other streaming services or just feel like a change of pace, check out the new Con TV Anime Network. <clears throat> Now, Japan's Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications released its 2018 analysis of the state of the expansion of broadcast content overseas recently. That's a catchy title. Where it reveals the breakdown of broadcast content exported from Japan. Now, unsurprisingly, anime is the largest genre by far, dominating both exported broadcast content and program rights sales. Anime accounts for 81%, that's the blue, of exported broadcast content and 82% of program rights. Even knowing, knowing that anime would account for the majority of Japanese overseas broadcast content though, those percentages are downright impressive. Dang. Um, also unsurprisingly, internet streaming comprises the largest share of the type of medium at 33.5%, followed by merchandising uh, rights at 31% and broadcast rights at 23%. Notably, internet streaming rights have seen more than an eight-fold increase from its amount in 2013, so only uh, five years prior to that report. The last category I touched on was division of ex exports by world region, which you all can probably also guess. Asia tops sales for both broadcast and program rights, accounting for more than half of both. North America follows at around 30%, and then on to Europe at around 10%. Keep it up, Asia and North America, and here's to lots more anime being exported overseas in the future. <clears throat> see here. Uh, now, if you have any brilliant anime pitches burning a hole in your brain, you'll need to submit them in uh, to someone other than Studio Bones, the anime studio. Oh, I'm sorry, that logo isn't visible at all. Um, the anime studio released a public statement this week, making it very clear that they do not accept unsolicited ideas or suggestions from the general public to avoid any unfortunate disputes or controversies that may arise from any coincidental identicality or similarities between the submitted ideas and intellectual property originally developed by Bones, Inc., end quote. Now, the statement is possibly related to the tragic arson of Kyoto Animation last summer. The suspect, who was formerly arrested just a couple weeks ago, claimed that he started the fire because KyoAni stole his novel. Uh, yeah, so probably trying to get around that or avoid that in the future. Bones go on to, goes on to clarify that if anyone does still submit ideas or proposals to Bones after the statement, it'll be assumed that they agree to a list of conditions, including that Bones is not expected to consider, reply to, or return the ideas, and is not liable for any sort of compensation should there happen to be similarities between a submitted idea and a Bones IP. The last condition listed makes the point especially clear, and I quote, any ideas or proposals submitted as hard copies via post or courier shall, as a general rule, be discarded unopened, end quote. Now, in fairness, this is a very common thing you see at uh, magazines, you know, uh, editors, things along those lines. Uh, they end the statement thanking readers for their understanding and cooperation. Again, this is a very standard, you know, legal thing. So not too surprising. I think they're just sort of clarifying. Now, the war against pirated manga content has continued on for quite some time now, and new strategies are arising for combating the spread of illegal material overseas. Japan's Content Overseas Distribution Association, an organization that aims to reduce piracy and encourage the international distribution of Japanese content, have begun posting a set of special anti-piracy manga on their website this week. Uh, yes, anti-piracy manga. The manga are part of the Manga Anime Guardians project, which was founded by Koda and Tokyo Otaku Mode back in 2014 to protect anime and manga content overseas. There are 16 total anti-piracy manga, and four will be released each Friday until July 3rd. In addition to the Japanese version, each manga will also have an English version, which is nice, and which probably makes more sense in the context of discouraging overseas piracy. 
uh, as well as a video version with music accompaniment. So presumably just you know static images moving uh, around. I don't know. Koda also plans to publish print versions of the manga as well as digital. Now this week's crop of manga were submitted by Akira Akatsuki, the creator of Madaka Box, um, Adich- sorry, sorry, Adichitoka, Noragami's mangaka, Rie Arai of Yotobanashi, Yotobanashi, Yotabanashi, and Amitsu, who created Ron the Peerless Beauty. The link to the website where all the manga will be posted is down in the video description, so give those a read sometime, and keep supporting your favorite creators however you can. You know, piracy is a problem. Now, last up this week, while the canon ending to the animated specials of the Gundam vs. Hello Kitty project was Amuro Ray and Hello Kitty discovering peace and friendship, the merchandise battle between the fan bases was not quite as nonpartisan. Throughout the campaign, it started in 2019 to celebrate the 40th and 45th anniversaries of Gundam and Hello Kitty, respectively, fans were encouraged to give their full support to their favorite franchise to see which would reign supreme monetarily. Well, this week the final results were announced and the Gundam fans triumphed. I'm actually kind of surprised. The finale event for the historic battle was supposed to take place in April with special custom popcorn machines to be themed around whichever side won the battle. Thankfully, even though the event had to be canceled, Gundam fans can still grab some popcorn to celebrate their victory, and I suppose Hello Kitty fans can have some popcorn too. The beautiful Gundam popcorn machine has as uh, um, uh, will now be stationed at Gundam Base Tokyo for a limited time starting today. The machine plays both Fly Gundam, the themed original Gundam, and a number of lines spoken by Amuro Ray, as well as dispensing Tasty Victory Popcorn. The grand battle might be over, but the two franchises are still going to use what they've learned uh, and keep working together. Uh, The Versus site has now already been changed to a love and peace campaign, so so hopefully we'll be seeing even more friendly collabs between them in the future. Hey, maybe we'll get a joint popcorn machine next time. That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching.